But one of the things that I worry about in women are brittle bones where they they don't have the, the structure of, of, of the bone. And this is what NK7 does. Metoquinone 7 takes calcium out of blood vessels where it doesn't belong and it puts it back in the bones where it does belong. So even somebody like myself, because I'm an aging male and, you know, osteoporosis and hip fracture is very dangerous in the male. I mean, you know, men who get this hip fracture do worse than women, believe it or not, you mm. know, because of post-op complications. So basically, I've been taking MK7 for years. And for any woman on this show uh, who's, you know, approaching those elder years, is you know, over the age of 50, I would seriously consider metoquinone 7 because, again, it does everything right in a woman's body. It's absolutely is. It's a it's really important for, for, for preventing brittle bones while while, you know, getting calcium out of blood vessels where it doesn't belong in the first place. Absolutely. And we talk a lot about vitamin D, right? People are a lot more aware about vitamin D now and are taking maybe higher levels. And so that is important. But the vitamin D also affects our calcium. Right. And so, again, when we're affecting our ca calcium, we want to make sure that calcium, to your point, is going into our bones where we want it to be and not lining our arterial vessels, which could then also leave us more vulnerable to heart disease. Yeah. And I'm so glad you mentioned uh, vitamin D and calcium because, you know, when I was writing my books years ago and I'm talking 20 years ago, 10 years ago, even um, the dogma was you know, giving women high calcium, postmenopausal right. women, they get 1,500 milligrams. Even when we were in school, Steve, it, and still it's sometimes like I see, still see it printed, right? And I'll tell you, if, if, if women are taking high calcium and, you know, good doses of vitamin D at the same time, they can get calcinosis or calcium deposition in the coronary arteries. That's why, um, you know, when any woman takes a multivitamin, she needs to read the labels. In fact, it's amazing. Just before this show, a well-known, and I mean, I'm not going to mention the name, but a very well-known uh, uh, television pro programmer, uh, you know, is on TV all the time, put together a, uh, a protein shake. And in the protein shake, there was 500 milligrams of calcium. And I said, wait a minute, there's no way I, I could even endorse this or recommend this because this is too much calcium to take, you know, in supplemental form every single day, especially with people taking higher vitamin D because of the pandemic. So mm -hmm. if you take high D and you're taking in 500 of calcium or more in the supplement, or if you're taking in a lot of calcium containing foods at the same time, you know, we don't want to get this scenario where we get, you know, the combination of too much vitamin D, which I don't think you're going to get too much unless they're taking, you know, 10,000 units a day. But, you know, if two to 5,000 units a day is good. But if you're taking a lot of excess vitamin D and, and you're taking a lot of calcium at the same time, uh, you can certainly get calcification of blood vessels, which we don't want. Yeah. And like with everything, right, it's ideal for someone to test their levels and know what their level is so they know if they're supplementing, if they're getting enough, if they're getting too much. And absolutely. I like <clears throat> I like recommending that people get calcium in through their diet as much as possible, too. And if they are taking any supplemental calcium, not too high and definitely making sure there's a good dose of magnesium on board to help support. Correct. Balance, balance the calcium. Well said, Brianna.